We've a real treat for you now as we take a trip down memory lane to the 1970s and the 1980s, when a group of young performers came together to form a singing and music group, which would see them perform at national competitions, weddings, festivals and also fundraise for local charities. We're delighted to be joined on this very special episode of the Swinford Chats podcast by Irish Mist, which consists of Monica Benson, the Greeley sisters, the Campbell sisters and Marion Thornburg, who unfortunately couldn't be with us at the time of recording due to a bereavement. A number of months ago, I met up with the group at Swinford Cultural Centre. What a great performance and rendition of Ride On from Irish Mist and we're delighted that they join us on our live show from Swinford this evening. So I suppose the first question to ask is uh, Mary, uh, where did uh, Irish Mist start and begin from? Oh God, well I suppose we've been singing, all of us have been singing since we were small, since we were tiny we, we were singing. I mean one of the first records that we ever got was uh, Ronnie Drew was the Dubliners or something and then the the Campbells over there, the first record that we all loved, that we all learned the words of was Dana, all kinds of everything. So I won't even tell you how old you were, or when that <laughs> was, you'll have to research that yourself. But anyway, from then on, I learned the guitar, learned to start to play the guitar when I was in second class. And I bought my first guitar in the little shop in town, it was five pounds. And I carried it down the road in this big blue cardboard box that was bigger than me at the time. I had don't know how I did it. But anyway, it started from there and we were part of the church choir and we participated in Feshes. The most the biggest one was in Balna and there was also one in Foxford, I think, a couple of times. But Balna one was the, the biggie yeah. for us. 
And I suppose music in your own home with your your mum being Mrs. Greeley yeah. was a huge part yeah, of life. Yeah, um, she taught, she encouraged us, and as did I meant to sister Evan who taught me guitar, but she taught us all singing, and she taught she was she was a great a great person for music and singing, and she encouraged loads of people. She was a primary school teacher. She didn't actually teach me, but she taught the girls, and our mother as well. She was a huge influence because she taught in Calasser, and she taught. She taught music to the whole school, basically, because the, everybody would come into her and then the teachers would swap over. So we it was sing, singing was always part of our lives and we, we always loved singing. So that was a plus for us. But it was a way of entertaining ourselves. It was a way of just getting out and doing different things. And when we all kind of got together as in different, this this format today is the, the most recent one, but we're still together at good ter- I won't say how many years, but there have been different lineups to, throughout the years. Yeah. But this is the this is the long one, and this is the one that's here. Here mm. and Monica Mary mentioned the Ballina Fesh. It was a, a huge day out. It was a great day out, one we all looked forward to very much. And um, we used to do a lot of practicing for it. We used to do duets, solo singing, and all that. So you either got your parents to bring you down, or we went on a bus. And Sister Evelyn, she would have been Sister Martinian at the time. Her name changed then to Sister Evelyn, Sister Evelyn Horn. But um, we'd all travelled down to Ballina for the fesh. And the fesh was held in the old parochial hall in Ballina, which is now the costume company, the Ballina Costume mm-hmm. Company. And um, so the big treat afterwards then was to go for the grub which we all looked forward to. Some people chose to go to Porrick's restaurant, which is no longer there. And then some other of us went to Cafola's and Cafola's are still there. But Ballina Fesh was the one. And I think in fairness to all the you know contestants from Swinford, they always give a very, very good performance. And in Ballina, even now in Ballina, I live in Ballina mm. now, and you'd often hear them talk about the groups and the interest from Swinford, the number of entries that would always come to, you know, from Swinford to the Fesh, which Brilliant. is great. Jan, it's still going today, the it Ballina is, Fesh, which, yeah. is, which is great. <laughs> yeah. And Francie, you uh, you were with the Irish Mist, I suppose, from the very beginning. Yeah, from the, from the very start, like, um, you now back in 1979 and 80, at the time we would have done a lot of singing um, for the Cheshire Home, out in the Cheshire Home, Dwyer Cheshire Home, Bola, um, at any of their parties and gatherings and that. And then we decided among ourselves we'd organise a fundraiser for the home. So at the time there would have been more, it wouldn't have been this format that's here now. There were other girls involved back then as well. And we did that at the fair day um, during the summer on the, the Wednesday, the fair day. And um, we raised quite a good bit of money for the um, O'Dwyer Cheshire Home. And as a result of that, then they invited us up to perform at their um, annual black tie um, banquet in the Burlington Hotel. That must have been a big huge. gig at the time. Yeah, because we were all around 15, 16 years of age. So it was a huge thing for us to go up there to perform. So it was um, it was fabulous. And then we kind of evolved, evolved from there in the group. And um, Michelle and Joan had joined us at a later stage. And then we started entering other competitions under the name of um, Irish Mist. And it kind of moved on it moved on from there like you know so and michelle and joan i suppose some of the best days were probably uh, during the singathons uh t- tell me about those days maybe well we were the substitutes on those days because obviously they had to, there had to be a rota done to cover the 12 hours of, of, of the singathon so there was um there was a caravan uh, we had benson's uh, caravan uh that mr benson kind of set up for us with sound systems as well and we set up on the street so we would have been the buckets go around with the buckets and then you got your stint we had to go in and sing for the half hour whatever stints that we we rolled out there at the time you know so it was which is really terrific yeah yeah and people were good they you had a sponsorship card i think that's was right. it that's right yeah so it was a sponsorship card that we all have everyone filled out and um we we we, we looked back at them with nostalgia when we were gathering for this and uh, you know the, the great thing was if somebody sponsored you 10p an hour so you got one pound 20 pounds <laughs> <laughs> big money big money <clears throat> but they were fantastic fundraisers for the cheshire home and um it was, it was great fun. It was a lot of work, but it was really good fun as well because, you know, just to be singing there the whole day and there was great interest from around the town, fantastic support from the town as well. And it was lovely to be doing something that you love doing as well mm-hmm. and at the same time raising funds for a great cause. And Joan, tell me a little bit about the... Um, I, read, I read in a piece of... Uh, in a paper article from, from back in the 80s that you were very versatile because you sang cabaret and a little bit of traditional. So your, your repertoire was uh, wide and, and uh, ranging. Yeah, I would say it was wide ranging. We we sang some songs we probably we would never sing now because 
we sang them to entertain back in the day. Um, we, oh God, we sang Irish songs, we sang, we have sung well, more sort of recently, we've sung sort of Neil Young stuff. The range has been extremely broad. Abba, even. Mm. Abba. We did a few Abbas. Yes, back, we did. Back indeed. at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 Just completely broad. There was kind of nothing that we didn't sing, I would say. Elvis. We sang Elvis. 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 <laughs> wow. We, we might get one of Elvis la later on. <laughs> and Nuala, I suppose there was other events as well. So you performed, as we, as we mentioned earlier, in the Burlington, but there was other days out as well that were uh, pretty big. Well, we um, sang, well, we used to sing at church weddings and um, I'll put it this way, people would make do donations to us for our competition fund. Don't be called for tax man. It's fancy morning. <laughs> so we saved the money. Francie was the um, the, uh, treasure. Kind of the treasure, the treasure, minister treasure. Okay. We saved the money, and then we had we used to travel around to different competitions. Martin O'Keefe from Calasser, God rest him, he was our driver, and almost like our minder, he was, mm. he'd bring us all over the place. We were in talent competitions. Started off in in Casabar, then we went to the Great Southern Galway, then we went to Drogheda. I mean, we were like we we. We Joe, we'd look at these, we'd find these competitions in the papers, and Joe, like our parents, no adults had anything to do with this. We did it ourselves. We practiced ourselves. We decided what songs we'd sing. We decided what harmonies we were going to sing, what instruments <coughs> we were going to play, and you know, then we'd rock off in these minibuses and take the next day off school. And I think <laughs> one of the biggest competitions was Sloga. Oh, Sloga was huge, and but we won Sloga twice, and we were looking for a competition that was more technical than talent orientated because we sing, we used to sing, because we sang in feshes and, and things like that, we'd be more interested in the harmonies and everything being exact. And Slova is one of those more technical competitions. Now it happens to be in Irish because there are no English ones that are technical. Mm. But so, um, and also that we were attracted to Slova because it's the competition we sang in was for um, singing with accompaniment under 26 and we were all under 26, but we were all in our twenties at that stage. Mm. So, um, and I know we, there was a few, Mary, you mentioned to me earlier, there was a few previous winners of Slova that, uh, it was nice to be up there with them too. Oh, it was it was wonderful. I mean, that's why I think that's where we all first ever heard of Soga because we we heard, we heard of the band Clonas. I, we wouldn't have we would have known Clonas, I suppose, from going around to festivals, the uh, festivals like the Casabar Festival and the festival that was on in Balsadere. Clonas were always they were always top they they always topped the list of 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 bands who would perform at any of the Irish festivals. And they were huge in Europe as well. They're huge in Germany and across across Europe. So when we heard Clans and we heard that they won this competition, it was always a dream to enter the competition. So needless to say, when we actually won it, it was like a dream come true for us because it wasn't just a Mickey Mouse thing. It was just it was a challenge. It was it was something. It was so something that we aspired to so much, and we worked really, really hard. But it was great because we put in so much work. But it was so worthwhile. It wasn't just learning a couple of songs and having the crack. It was just it was serious, you know. Brilliant, brilliant. And Angela, as well as performing around the country at different competitions and events, you performed closer at home. I know one of the special days was the opening of the community centre. That was huge for all of Swinford. It was terrific. It was 1979, as you say. And uh, Dr. Porrick Carney, who was the captain of the All Ireland winning team for Mayo, <laughs> on Mayo, <laughs> he flew home from America for it. And it was a very, very big day. So after the cutting of the ribbon, uh, we were asked to perform for that. And apparently, I wrote a song, uh, well, wrote the lyrics of a song. Uh, Totally dedicated to his coming home. Yes, but thankfully I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put you on the spot now, but for the next live show, yeah. maybe Angela. Yeah. And he has died since uh, the Lord of Mercy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I know his medals, I think, are going to come back at some stage. Just right. right. The Beautiful yeah, yes. Cultural Centre yeah. as well, yeah. which is yeah. lovely. Yeah. And Michelle, uh, across the road as well in Charlestown, there was a big event there. Oh, was totally, yeah. Uh, back in, so there was a, it, was, it was very big at the time. It was called the International Western Rose <laughs> Competition. And it was shortly after we won the All-Ireland of Sloga, as the girls mentioned, and uh, we were the interval act while they played there. And we had Joe Lynch from of um, Glen Row fame. He was MC, and then we also another thing that Mike Murphy was MC as well. So we were very big. Yeah, we were up there, <laughs> up there with the, with the good ones. 
Yeah, but it was a big, it was a big deal actually at that festival at the time in Charleston. So we, we, we sang at that as well. Yeah, it was a song I think that uh, Michael Cummins uh, from Midwest wrote. It was called I, My Western Nose, I Love You. So I don't know, you'll have to look that up with Michael yeah, again. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that out. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And Angela, I think you're, you might be uh, the person responsible for the name, I think, of Irish Mist. Well, I've been given that due today. Um, Francie's mother-in-law used to drink Irish Mist. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how, that's how the name came about. Well, we also grew up in a pub, the White House, you know, and uh, we were running on stage and we had to get a name for ourselves and just five seconds before we went on stage and Mary McNicholas from Lishina Brown just came into my head and so Irish Mist was born. <laughs> was born. And tell me what's it like, you know, to sing with your family as well. It was uh, at that age group growing up probably with your sisters, there was probably a few tiffs well, at some point. But... but the funny thing is, the great thing was when we were singing, we couldn't argue. <laughs> and, you know, we've all, it was more, we've, we've always argued, but the wonderful thing is, I haven't seen the girls in so long, and I walk in here today, and it's like we were together yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a bond we that's were. there forever yeah. with us, and it's beautiful. Do you know what I mean? I you think know? music probably does that for people. You're able to come back together and yeah. just, yeah. and probably memories come back when you sing no, a particular song. Oh, it's I got very emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, music. Music. it's lovely. Yeah. It's lovely. But you know what I was going to say there, Tammy? Mm. And Nula uh, just mentioned about how we would have put the songs and I suppose the arrangement of the songs mm. Uh, together yeah. ourselves but I think it's I know that Nula and Mary mentioned their mum Maura um, Gwili God rest her but I think it's important to mention that while we would have done the musical stuff ourselves we had tremendous support from home because at the end of the day we were only 15 16 yeah, years yeah, of age yeah, yeah. and we had support from our parents and I know that Francie Angela and Michelle's mum and dad were both very well known singers Angela and Michal Campbell and Swentford God rest them both and my own dad Donald Benson was in a band the Fenian Ballad Group Years and years ago, they used to do the circuit of the singing lounges. And then Marion, who can't be here today, Marion Thornburg, because of bereavement, but her family would have been big into music too as well. So I think even though we would have kind of been the boss of what we were doing, we had tremendous emotional, I suppose, financial support for instruments and all that kind of stuff from our peers. So I think it's important to mention yeah, you know, that, you know, today as well. So. And I think we, we even see still today, Swinford is a great place for music and youngsters mm. and the local cultists and things like that. Uh, so it's brilliant. I'll stay with you, Monica, because I'm sure you like your fashion. Right. And I'm sure back then you were also very fashionable. So did the band have an outfit? Well, we did. <laughs> now, the light outfit was never seen. And I have to say, they say that, you know, Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. We were never imitated. <laughs> Our uniform was never imitated ever. But, it, you know something, it, it suited, it was of its time. Of its time, yeah. right? Yeah. And I suppose we have fond memories of it. It was actually a bottle green skirt, which would have been made, Murray's had a, just behind Mellet's pub here in Swinford, Mellet's had a factory. And I remember as children. Murray's, Murray's, Murray's. Sorry? Murray's had the factory. Yeah, yeah. what did I say? You yes. said Mellet's pub. Oh, sorry, oh, it was Mellet's behind Mellet's pub, pub. Yeah. but it was Murray's factory. And if ever we were doing sewing in school, you always went to Murray's factory to get the ends of the material and they'd give you loads of it to do your sewing in school. But anyway, we got them to make these green skirts. Now, there weren't minis, there were long skirts down to about there. And then we had a white blouse and then we had a most unusual black velvet waistcoat, which had to be worn closed, okay? So if you were any way well endowed at all, it could have been a bit of a problem, but anyway, we all managed. And then there was a black velvet little ribbon, which we tied around our necks. And then at the time, the emblem, I don't know if it still is, but the emblem at the time for the Cheshire home was a red feather. So we were given little brooches metal brooches of a red feather and actually mm -hmm. my mother found my one recently and um, but it's, it's lovely actually to have it but that was our uniform and as I said it was you know it was bespoke it was you know never seen <laughs> before it was very natural <laughs> and it was all bought locally the blouses yes, were bought yeah. in Lavins yeah and the little uh, black little uh, velvet ribbons were bought down in Kennedy's mm -hmm. yeah. is that where we bought them so, yeah, yeah. Was oh, that was nice yeah. Yeah. But well, oh, we looked brilliant. smart. We did look smart, yeah. You're yeah. talking. It's all part of the act. 14 yeah. years ago. That's a long time. Now, another big day would have been the busking competition at the Sheems Astrology Festival, Michelle. Yes, Tommy, it was indeed, yeah. So when, it was, it was when the, the busking festival started, um, so we would have busked on the street that, that day and we're very proud to say we were the first winners of the, the Sheemsa uh, competition of the very first one. And 
later on that night. You know, there would always be the big truck in the yes. square. Yep. So we were brought down then to perform as the, as the winner. So we go down, down on the truck and perform. <laughs> we went Indeed. down there at the square. It was fantastic. Brilliant. It was really terrific. It was some amazing memories from singing. Yeah. Over the years then, I, it, we, did, we did it for a few years did, off and yeah. on, depending yeah. on and who And then was different around. groups of us, if we were around during the time, I mean, I did it a couple of times for me and Francie and Michelle did it. No, Siobhan joined, joined us. Yeah. She's yeah. a sub. Yeah. If you're around, our other sister, sister. Your other sister, sister. Okay. okay. You do it for the crack if crack, you're yeah, around, yeah. you know, because it's good, you know. Have you a favourite memory out of all the all the places you performed or out of all the events or the competitions? I know Sloga was probably Sloga. a highlight of you. Sloga for me. Sloga yeah. for me. Yeah. always yeah. be Sloga because, only because I think we, we were, like the way we performed and the way we sang and the way we played, I think we were just really, really good. We were really good. I mean, we could be as good again. But we, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of practice. Well, I and think, just to I get think we together heard today, to do it, was, it was beautiful. And uh, I know your next song, uh, My Irish Molly, is sounding fantastic. I had a little, uh, a little uh, listen to it earlier on and it sounds great. So uh, Irish Miss, thank you so much for joining us on our live show from Swinford. Uh, thank you, I know everyone thank at home you. is actually yeah. going to enjoy this song. They've enjoyed Right On. And uh, I'm looking forward maybe the White House at some stage in the next couple of months <laughs> yeah. uh, when there's a reunion there maybe with Hopefully. some more sounds and music. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Da 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 da